Hey, off camera here, this is Jamie from Stonemeyer Games, and I'm gonna walk you through three sample turns of Wormspan that'll show you pretty much what this game is all about in three distilled turns. Uh, we have the three main actions, excavate, entice, and explore. And we're gonna start out with an explore turn. So we're gonna explore our golden grotto. You can see that I haven't explored the golden grotto, grotto yet, this round and so i'm going to pay one coin this is the equivalent of an action cube in wingspan i'm going to pay one coin i'm going to put it right there to remember that i've used the golden grotto once this round if i wanted to visit if i wanted to explore it again i'd have to pay a coin and an egg so i'm going to explore the golden grotto when i do that i uh put my little adventurer meeple here and i start down this path you can see here this means if activated so Right away, even if I didn't have any dragon cards here, right away, I gain a dragon card. So I'm gonna gain a dragon card from the display, gain a dragon card and put it over here in my supply. So I gain that and then I keep on going. I'm gonna keep on going until I reach a stop sign. So I'll continue on the path onto this Savannah Dragonette. And this is one of the new dragon types found in Wormspan. This is a hatchling card. Hatchlings are growing up. I'm feeding them and they're growing up into uh, a big, powerful dragon. And so it says, if activated, I can cash a milk from my supply here. I happen to have a milk token right here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and cash it on this Savannah Dragonette. It also says, anytime that you cash a milk here, gain a crystal, which is great because I happen to need a crystal for a dragon that I want to play. So gain a crystal from the supply, add it to my personal supply over here. And then last, it says, when the third milk is cached, also gain two Dragon Guild um, advancements. I don't have uh, three milk on the Savannah Dragon at, yet, but I will. That's when it's fully grown up, but I don't have that yet. So I won't do that at this point. However, I will continue to move on along this path here to gain a single Dragon Guild advancement. And that's up here. I haven't, it's not completely on camera. Here's what it looks like the Dragon Guild. It has one of the four Dragon Guild tiles in the middle. Put that back over here. But I do gain a Dragon Guild advancement. And I'm going to move my Dragon Guild token here. And this says place my, an unused marker above. So that's referring to these cubes. I get to place it anywhere on the Dragon Guild. So you can see the Rainforest Guild has a variety of benefits here, one-time benefits, powerful one-time benefits that only one player can choose. Once a cube is there, another player can't choose it. Um, I'm going to choose a simple one just for the sake of this example. I'm going to choose this six victory point option here. That's worth six victory points at the end of the game. So I've advanced on the Dragon Guild. I can continue to move around the Dragon Guild if I gain other advancements. And every half cycle, I get to potentially put a cube on the, uh, on the Rainforest Guild. In fact, this space can fit any number of cubes. So that's a backup if a lot of players keep going around and around. Uh, so that's one turn because I've reached the end of this, this path. I can go no further. There's, there's no way for me to, con to continue because of this uh, stop sign. And so my adventurer returns to base camp over here. And that would be the end of my turn. So that's one turn. Let's take turn two. So in turn two, I want to entice. And so... I'm going to entice a dragon to enter uh, the, my, my cave system here. And the dragon that I'd like to entice is the uh, Guardian Horned Drake. Um, there are a couple of dragons that I could have chosen here, and I'll, I'll show you what those dragons are. But the Guardian Horned Drake can go in uh, the Golden Grotto, or it can go in the Amethyst Abyss. And I happen to have a gold and a crystal. So I can spend these two and a coin. So there is a coin. And Entice has a coin cost as well. So there's another coin right there for Entice. And I can place it on a place in my, in my, cat, in my player mat that has an excavated cave. So I can place it here or here, but the Guardian Horn Drake can't go in the Crimson Cavern. So I need to place it down here in the Amethyst Abyss. I could also place it here, but there's no cave yet here. I haven't excavated this spot, so I can't place it there. So I place it instead right here. So I'll place the Guardian Horn Drake. Now you've seen an if activated ability here on the Savannah Dragonette. The Guardian Horn Drake has an end of round ability. So it says tuck a dragon card from your hand here if you do lay an egg here. 
Uh, it's not the end of the round, so I can't use that ability yet. That isn't a when played ability, that's an end of round ability. But I have picked some other cards that have other types of abilities as an example. The Homely Fey has an end of game ability. It says gain five victory points if you have four dragons in your crimson, crimson cavern up there. And I also have the Descending Firevern. It has a when played ability. When played, gain a coin. Unlike in Wingspan, in Wormspan, you can actually gain new actions because these coins represent actions. So uh, uh, you can gain new actions over the course of the game that can, that can give you more actions than other players potentially. So that is, uh, that's an entice turn. That's the, that's the entire entice turn. We return to base camp. Let's take one more turn. Let's take an excavate turn. So over here, we have to pay a coin. That's the, the, what we have to pay for actions. And then uh, if there is a cost in the column, so there are some egg costs over here that we have to pay, but there isn't an egg cost for the columns that we need to excavate. There are a few pre-excavated caves, as you saw for the guarding horn drake, but these aren't excavated, so I would need to excavate these next. So I've paid a coin, and then I need to choose a cave card from my turn, from my hand and place it on an unexcavated space. And I can choose any of these. So let's say that the next dragon that I want to play is, uh, is this Descending Firevern, and so I want to play it down here in the Amethyst Abyss, and so I would place my cave right there. Uh, the only cost was that coin, and it has a when played ability. It says when played, I gain a cave card, so we'll gain a new cave card from the display, and lay two eggs. So we have all these dragon eggs over here. I can lay them on any dragons that can hold eggs, like the Guardian Horn Drake can hold four different eggs. I can also place them, so I'll put, I'll put both of them here, but we also have two egg storage spots on the player mat itself. Uh, you'll get one of these eggs as income at the beginning of the game, at the beginning of each of the next three rounds. So basically an egg at the beginning of each of the four rounds of the game. And so even on your first turn, if you happen to get eggs, there's a place to put them, even if you haven't played any dragons. But right now I have eggs on both of those spots, and now I have two of them on the Guardian Horn Drake. And those are the three actions of, of Wormspan. That's the basic uh, uh, rules of the game right there. The three things you're doing. You're exploring, you're enticing, and you're excavating. Usually, actually, in the opposite order. You're excavating so you can play, and you can, so you can entice dragons, and then you're exploring down these caves. Um, of course, all the emergent complexity from the game comes from the different cards you choose and the order in which you choose them as you move your adventure down these paths. Uh, I look forward to showing you more gameplay. I think you'll see some full gameplay videos from content creators, but those are three sample turns of what a turn looks like in a game of Wormspan. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Thank you.